All right, here's my attempt at a tutorial uh, for finding the volume of revolutions of uh, standard objects. And we're also going to be able to use this skill set uh, to find the length of, uh, you know, geographical figures. For example, you can find the length of a coastline or a river um, or any sort of length that you can uh, project from a map. So we're going to work with, uh, with a sample. This is a, a small vase that I have. And um, I took a picture of it, and the important thing here is that the picture um, is superimposed next to a ruler so that we can get as true to a scale uh, in real life as we can. Now, it's important to recognize what we're going to want to do is rotate the picture like this because what we're going to do is uh, represent the cross-section of half of this vase, vase <laughs> as a function itself. And then what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to um, use a mathematical algorithm to essentially simulate rotating that around the x-axis. So we're going to rotate this uh, geometric shape around the x-axis, it will produce a volume. And again, we can use mathematics to estimate uh, what the volume will be. So, uh, what I want to show you today is how to use Desmos uh, to, uh, to do the data collection and to come up with the appropriate equation um, that will represent this particular arc. So, the first thing you need to do is learn that you can actually uh, get an image onto Desmos uh, very easily. In fact, you go to add an item, and uh, here, let me enlarge this a little bit. So we go to add an item, and you go to image. And then uh, you can go to your downloads. If you downloaded the picture or wherever you have your picture stored, uh, you can insert that image. Um, and so here you'll see file. Um, it loads the image, and there we go. Now we can uh, move around and resize this image as needed. In order to make this work effectively, what we have to do is um, make it so that the scale on Desmos matches one centimeter scale on this ruler. So right now I'm going to look right here and try to make that this centimeter correspond to one unit on Desmos. So all I have to do is scroll out a little and just resize until I get the right dimensions. So I'll save you the trouble of watching me struggle and resize all this stuff and just show you what it looks like in the end. So as you can see, what I've done is I've made it so that the x-axis cuts through the middle of the vase as much as possible. Now, if you're a careful observer, you might recognize that I couldn't get this perfectly symmetrical. The more symmetrical you can get this image to appear, the better your results are going to be overall. But for me, you can see that uh, the top of my vase here goes up to um, almost three and a half, and down here it goes down to almost four negative four, um, but I was trying to match the symmetry here and here uh, along with the symmetry here and here. So I know with this particular project I'm not going to get perfect results or reliable results right off the bat because I didn't center my image. But because I'm doing this on a holiday I decided that I will just uh, accept what I have uh, for this particular video because for all intents and purposes you'll be working with a different image and different data. Now what I did is I created a template uh, where uh, the points along here are all one unit apart. Now if your image is longer than 13 centimeters you're going to want to add more points and you can do so uh, just by copy paste. So I can take this um, right here and copy it and then I can hit uh, enter and hit paste and then I'll change four, 13 to 14 boom, boom, now I've, I've got another opportunity for a new slider and a new point. I don't need that new point. It doesn't work for my data, but I'll show you. That's what you can do. You can add as many points as you like. Also, if you want a better data collection, you could also collect points in the every half of a unit. So you can let um, x be a half, and x be one and a half, and two and a half, and then you can get points in a much, uh, much more, much more data. Now, what you can do thanks to Desmos is you can uh, actually drag each point to uh, where you want it to be, and you can also zoom in so you can drag those points to as close to the edge so that the center of the point is on the edge as much as possible. And uh, what you'll see is after a while you get all the data um, collected to the best of your ability and uh, then you can start letting Desmos do all the work of finding the equation for you. As a matter of fact, uh, because I'm a sympathetic person, um, I did some of the work for you already 
in as much as actually typing this stuff in. So here um, I'm going to close the data collection folder and open up the regression folder. And what you can see is um, I made a table that has all of the X's, 0 through 13, and it has all of the Y's, but for the Y values, I just put B0, B, B sub 1, B sub 2, and so forth. These B values have already been created by my dragging of my points over here. Uh, if you open up the data folder here, you can see that uh, this is B0 is 1, B1 is 2.6, and so forth. So <clears throat> just from dragging, um, the B values for the Y's are automatically calculated for me and inserted into this table right here then you can actually find a variety of different kinds of functions. And in this case, because we're dealing with um, curves, um, there's a lot of different functions out there, but polynomials are great functions for capturing this kind of curvature, uh, basically where we curve on slope and go up and down and so forth. So I start with a cubic polynomial, and the template's already there, and we can see that it creates a curve that kind of fits the data as best as possible. But on close inspection, you can see that there are portions of the vase that are not being represented by this curve, so this is uh, underneath the actual vase, and then up over here, uh, you can see uh, the curve is above the data and above the actual vase. So there's a fit here, but it's not necessarily a good fit. Another way to check the fit is this R squared value. This is a regression coefficient, and the closer this number is to 1, the better fit you have for your curve. So I'm going to reject the cubic function and see what happens if I make a fifth degree function. And with the fifth degree polynomial, I see a higher R value. And um, to some extent, when I put them side by side, you can see a slightly better fit for the red compared to the orange. But there's still uh, something happening over here that I don't like. It's not the best fit possible. So I'm going to reject both the cubic and the quintic. And I'm going to see what happens when I do a sixth degree polynomial uh, right here. So I click on that button. Now I'm starting to get a curve that really does resemble and go through as much of these data as possible. And you can see the R squared value is 0.997, which is really, really close to 1. It's a great fit. And you can even see how the curve very closely goes through the data that we have. What's fun about this, by the way, is you can, uh, you can drag one of these points and it will pull the curve down for you and it'll change the entire equation. So if you don't like the fit, another thing that you can do is just uh, tweak and adjust some of the data um, and make it so that maybe it fits a little better. See, I could pull that down a little, um, I could pull this up a little and, uh, and get the best fit possible. Um, so once you're satisfied with a polynomial equation that works for you, what you'll have to do is uh, basically copy and paste all of these coefficients. These are all, uh, hold on a second. These are all the coefficients on each of these. So A1 is this number down here. A2 is this number right here. And so what I did is I copied and pasted each of those A values onto a polynomial function. And then what I did at the end of the function is I restricted my domain to only go from 0 to 13. So when I click on this function, and I'm also going to uh, take off the 6 degree. Yeah, this was the, the polynomial. I'll take that blue one off. Let me show you. This is the whole curve. And I don't want all this blue stuff over here and all this blue stuff over here. So I could take off the regression equation and just have the function that covers this curve from 0 to 13. So this now represents this giant beast right here. This function represents a polynomial curve to the 6th power, 6 degree polynomial curve, that will give me best resembling curve of the cross-section of my laws. Now, this particular skill set I'm going to demonstrate can be done with maps as well, uh, but the next stage is going to be to calculate the volume if I was to again revolve this particular curve around the x-axis. That will come in a later video, but for now uh, we'll have enough to do just to collect and gather data. So, thanks for watching. Or wait, uh, and before I finish, I'm going to show you how we can, uh, well, no, I don't need to do that. You can figure this out. Uh, you can get a picture of a map uh, and, uh, and follow the coastline just like I followed this, the curvature of this particular um, vase. All right, thanks again.